Hello everybody. I want to welcome you to another study in the Word. I was going to talk in this series of teachings on deliverance and then we were going to pray some deliverance prayers. I think this is really relative to the time we're living in. And I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. And I want to read a scripture to you in Ephesians chapter 6. It really is a very well-known scripture. And, uh, and then we'll be going to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Ephesians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, if you want to find your place. And uh, we read in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. I'm going to back up a little bit here. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the powers of might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Then in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, another familiar scripture for a lot of people. And if we look down here at verse, oh, let's say 3, I'm going to read this one to you out of the Amplified Bible. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not carry out on our warfare according to the flesh, <clears throat> excuse me, and using mere human weapons. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, but they are mighty before God, the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. And so much as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One. It's interesting because these scriptures here point out, first of all, that we're not wrestling against human beings, but against the spiritual wickedness, demons, demonic spirits, uh, evil spirits, whatever you want to call them. And also, our warfare is not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of these strongholds in our minds. The philosophies, the ideas that come from demonic doctrines, demonic ideas, demonic activities, and so on. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's really interesting because the battleground's in the mind. You know, the Bible says that man is a spirit. He has a soul, which is his mind, his will, his emotions, and he lives in a physical body. And that's uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, I believe. We need to understand something very, very important because a lot of people have told me over there as well Christians cannot be possessed by the devil I would agree Christians cannot be possessed by the devil to be possessed by the devil you'd have to be possessed spirit soul and body because that's your whole man to be taken over though in certain areas of our mind certainly is possible you know God lives in our spirit God is a spirit they that worship him must worship them him in spirit and truth the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost God bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. We're born of God, born of the spirit of God. So God lives in our spirit. Satan can't live in our spirit, certainly. But he can get a stronghold in our mind. Whether the demons are actually living in our body or just influencing our mind in some way isn't my main concern. It's getting rid of them that's my main concern. And I always tell people, let's go ahead and use every weapon we can to come against the enemy. You know, in Ephesians chapter 6, it says we are to take the whole armor of God. And one of the, the offensive weapon that we are to use is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Word of God is extremely powerful and pulls down these strongholds. And so, I've learned several things here about deliverance that I wanted to share with you today. First of all, it can't hurt somebody to do deliverance prayers because you never know. Maybe there's some kind of influence that's got a hold of your mind or your body. Maybe you need healing in your body. Maybe you need deliverance in your mind. Maybe you're being tormented by demons terribly. 
There's several principles that I always tell people are important when it comes to deliverance from evil spirits. Number one is you have to understand the power there is in the blood of Jesus and you have to understand that Jesus defeated the enemy at Calvary. In fact, Colossians, in the book of Colossians, it tells us that Jesus spoiled principalities and powers, making a show of them openly in the resurrection and the, and the, the death, the burial, and resurrection of the cross. And uh, he spoiled principalities and powers. Another word for spoiled would be he paralyzed them. He brought them to nothing. He broke their power. See, a lot of people don't understand this. Jesus has already done everything he's going to do about the devil. It's up to us now to enforce that victory that he won. And to enforce the victory that he won, the Bible talks a lot about casting out devils. Mark chapter 16, if you read that, Jesus told his disciples, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he said, one of the first signs that will follow the believer is they will cast out the devil. This means exercise authority over devils. Get rid of them. Command them to leave. And if necessary, cast them out of people. You see, in your own sphere of influence, when you run into the devil, you should be able to take authority over him and make him leave. Don't let the devil torment you. You torment the devil. Another thing we learn in Luke chapter 10, he gave up his, his disciples authority. Behold, we, he gives us authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm us. Either that's true or it's not true. Jesus came, the Bible says, to destroy, to unloose, to dissolve all the works of the devil, no matter what it is. So we can be assured it's God's will to set us free. And if you believe that he will, he will. So the first thing you need to understand is we have authority over devils, all of them. Doesn't make any difference how big they are, how mean they are, how nasty they are, what their name is, who cares? Jesus only asked the devil his name one time in the scriptures. I don't ever do that unless he leads me to. I've only done that maybe two times in my entire life. I don't care what their names are. I don't care how big they are. I don't care where they come from. I don't care if they're a principality or a power. Uh, I could care less. That's not what we should uh, be thinking about. What we should be thinking about is just telling them to leave because that's what Jesus did and they left. Now it's important also to understand that there's, if you have more than one demon that's affecting you, you have a strong man. And you have to bind that strong man, Jesus said in Matthew uh, chapter 12, if you're going to spoil his goods. So I always like to take authority over the strong men. The way I do that is I break the power of every principality and power and ruler of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. We break the power over that because the scripture says whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever we loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Again, it does not say whatever God binds on earth shall be bound in heaven. God's already done everything he's going to do about binding the devil. We have to enforce that down here. You see, legally, Satan is a defeated foe, but we have to enforce that for that to come into play in our lives. And so that's what we're going to do. You see, we have, we have to understand that Satan is a defeated foe. That's a very important thing. The devil doesn't like that fact. You know, and if he starts arguing with you, just say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to argue with you. You know, I read the back of the book, we win, and you don't. And he doesn't like that. Then you have to understand there's power in the blood of Jesus. I'm telling you what, the blood of Jesus Christ has given us a covenant with God through Jesus Christ that is all-powerful. And through that covenant, we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, which means we have the same authority on earth as Jesus Christ does or did when he walked this planet. So we are able, through the blood of Jesus Christ, to come clean and free and to claim the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you're a child of God, Satan has no business trying to influence a child of God, trying to harass a child of God, or trying to take up residence inside a child of God because of that blood of Jesus. And we just plead the blood of Jesus over you right now, completely, spirit, soul, and body. And Satan has no right to cross that bloodline. Then the next principle, so pleading the blood's important, but the next principle that I wanted to share with you very quickly when it comes to deliverance is very simple. It's, a, it's a conf, the principle of confession of our faith. 
I like to say it like this, a confession of God's word. You know, God confirms his word with signs following. It's very important that you understand that. And it's very important that we, as the body of Christ, understand that. Now here in, in Romans chapter 10, if you look down at verse 9 and 10, it says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, now notice, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now there's some important words here that you need to understand. First of all, uh, Jesus Christ is the high priest of our confession. He watches over what we say. Death and life are at the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Um, the Word of God says here that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our spirits or our hearts that he has risen from the dead, we shall be saved. For confession is made unto salvation. Really, I don't think the church overall has really understood what the word salvation means. The word salvation doesn't just mean being born again or the new birth. The word salvation means anything God provided salvation to do, any promise of God in the Bible for you. You know, the Word of God tells us that all the promises of God are yes and amen unto us through Christ Jesus, and that Jesus Christ leads us in always to triumph in Christ Jesus, always. So the promises of God are yes and amen unto us. So we anything that Jesus paid for is part of our salvation. And the principle is our confession is made unto salvation. Now that means this, the word confession means saying the same thing God said or agreeing with God. And the word salvation, of course, I mean it's an all-inclusive word, whatever you're believing for, whatever you're trusting God for, whatever God promises us. And certainly deliverance from evil spirits is part of that. That is part of our salvation, you see. And so I, I tell people, start to confess that you're free. Start to confess the word of God, these promises I'm giving you and I'm sharing with you. Confess them every day. Um, confess promises from God's word. And when you do that, confession is made unto salvation. If you need healing in your body, confession is made unto healing. If you need deliverance, confession is made unto deliverance. If you need salvation, confession is made unto salvation. If you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, confession is made unto being filled with the Holy Ghost. So this is very important. Now, these are the principles that I say are the most important things when it comes to deliverance. Of course, the most important thing is understanding that Jesus Christ died for you, and that Jesus Christ loves you, and that Jesus Christ wants to help you. And if you open your heart to him, if you're not a Christian, he'll come in, and he will give you the new birth and make you a child of God. Therefore, once you become a child of God, the Bible says he translated the, translates us out of the kingdom of darkness or the rule of Satan and he transforms us or he translates us into the kingdom of the son of his love. So if you have not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you must, you must do that first. So if you're here today and you're listening to me and somebody shared this with you, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we need to make Jesus Christ uh, your Lord and Savior first before we pray for any kind of deliverance because it's important that your spirit be born again. So I just want you, you can do it out loud if you want to right where you're at or you can just pray on the inside of yourself. It's important that you pray though with me and just say this, Heavenly Father, you pray it. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus name. I know I'm a sinner and I know I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. I've sinned many many times but I believe this. I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross. That he shed his blood on the cross for me and that he bore my sins and took my punishment the Father in his love and mercy took my punishment and gave it to Jesus. He took my place. He became the very essence of sin for me. That it, now he can give me the very essence of his righteousness. 
and I can become a child of God. Just pray that. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I open my heart to Him. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe He rose again from the dead. And the Bible says, if I believe that and confess that, I will be saved. I turn my life totally over to you, and I turn away from all of my past life and my sins in Jesus' name. Thank you. I make you Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer now, you're in a position to receive deliverance. Somebody says, well, Pastor Tom, you don't know all the evil things I've done. It doesn't matter what kind of evil things we've done. Jesus just washed your past clean. But the evil spirits that may have invaded your life may want to try to remain, but we're going to make them leave now. So if you need deliverance, I'm going to pray some prayers, and we'll do this every once in a while. I'll make one of these available with more prayers. And <clears throat> we're going to root out some evil spirits. Now, to be able to do this, uh, the first thing I always tell people is we need to renounce some things. And, and by renouncing, I simply mean this. You know, a lot of things that have happened in our past, you know, any sins or unforgiveness or bitterness or resentments, we need to renounce and we need to repent of all that. You know, and also, maybe things our parents have done. Because the Bible says that, you know, these, these sins can visit us up to even a thousand generations. So as an example, you'll find in, in a family unit where somebody's an alcoholic, uh, normally if you trace that, it runs through their family unit. It's the same way with sickness and disease a lot of times. It runs through the family unit, certain sickness and diseases. It's the same thing with demons. I mean, uh, some people you know, may have had a family unit that was involved in the occult world or some type of cult or false religion. Well, that can affect you. In fact, it can even affect you when you're a child, and it can even affect you in the womb. So <clears throat> we need to renounce these things. So pray this with me. I'm just going to go along slowly here, and we're going to pray these prayers. Pray it with me out loud. I renounce all lust. Pray it. I renounce all lust, perversion, immorality, uncleanness, impurity, and sexual sins of any kind in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I renounce all witchcraft, sorcery, divination, and occult involvement in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that I have been involved in or my family has been involved in. Pray that. Amen. And I repent of all of these activities. I'm sorry, Lord. Please wash me clean. I renounce all ungodly soul ties and immoral relationships in the name of Jesus. Just pray that. I renounce all ungodly soul ties and immoral relationships in the name of the Lord Jesus. You say, well, Pastor Tom, what's that all about? Soul ties are something that happen when we we have um, sex outside of marriage, any kind of sex outside of marriage. And marriage means a man and a woman. <laughs> you know, you got to say that today. <clears throat> Anything else will cause a soul tie. And even emotional attachments can cause soul, soul ties. And those will hinder you. They'll hold you back and they open the door to Satan. So we, we renounce those. Say, I renounce every soul tie in the name of Jesus. Pray that. And then pray this with me. I renounce all hatred, all anger, all resentment, all revenge, all retaliation, unforgiveness, and bitterness in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now pray this way. I forgive any person who has ever hurt me disappointed me, abandoned me, mistreated me, or rejected me in the name of Jesus. Pray that. 
pray this I renounce all addiction to drugs alcohol or any legal or illegal substance that has bound me in the name of Jesus I renounce all pride pray that I renounce all pride haughtiness arrogance vanity ego disobedience and rebellion <clears throat> of any kind <clears throat> excuse me in the name of Jesus I renounce all envy jealousy covetousness in the name of Jesus I renounce all fear unbelief and doubt in the name of the Lord Jesus I renounce all selfishness self-will self-pity self-rejection self-hatred and self-promotion in the name of Jesus I renounce all ungodly soul ties or excuse me sorry I renounce all ungodly thought patterns and belief systems in the name of Jesus pray that pray this I renounce all ungodly covenants oaths and vows made by myself or my ancestors in the name of Jesus so now we have renounced those things father I take authority right now over every evil spirit that may have come in and to take captive this particular individual in any of these areas and all other areas I bind every strong man in the name of the Lord Jesus because master I know your name is above every single name hallelujah and that name is powerful and it has authority just as if you were sitting here right here with me there's power in that name and father I take authority over every principality and every power and every ruler of the darkness of this world and every spiritual wickedness that might be supplying authority to these lesser demons that are hindering or in this family line I take authority over all witchcraft and familiar spirits and every other kind of spirit that we didn't even mention today I take authority over every group of spirits and every strong man over those groups of spirits and I break the power over all of their influence in Jesus name and now I command and pray this with me now we command in the name of Jesus every spiritual form of darkness to come out and to leave us in the name of Jesus I'm father I command these people to be free right now in Jesus name every one of you demon forces I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you must let them go in Jesus name I command you to be free I command you to be free I command you to be free in the name of Jesus whom the Son sets free is free in deed I command and rebuke every demonic spirit and I rout you out of them in Jesus name you must obey me you must leave you must be gone in the name of Jesus now I want you to pray with me another prayer uh, let's go over here I want to I want to pray a prayer about breaking curses and casting out generational spirits and I want you to pray with me again and please pray this with me and just say it with me because it's important that you do this and some of these are just scriptures say I am redeemed from the curse of the law I am redeemed from the curse of the law Galatians 313 I break pray that I break all generational curses of pride lust perversion 
rebellion, witchcraft, idolatry, poverty, rejection, fear, confusion, addiction, death, and destruction in the name of Jesus. Now pray this with me. I command all generational spirits that came into my life during conception in the womb, in the birth canal, and through the umbilical cord to come out in Jesus' name. Say that with me. Come out of me in Jesus' name. That's it. I break all spoken curses and negative words that have spoken over my life in any way, shape, or form in the name of Jesus. All negative words, I break the power of that in Jesus' name. In fact, I say this, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I cancel every evil word, every word curse against you in Jesus' name. Pray this with me. I break all spoken curses and negative words spoken over my life by others, including those in authority, in the name of Jesus. I command all ancestral spirits of Freemasonry, idolatry, just pray it, because it could be in your family, even if you didn't do this. So let's pray it again. Go back. I command all ancestral spirits of Freemasonry, idolatry, witchcraft, false religion, polygamy, lust, and perversion to come out of my life now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command all hereditary spirits of lust, spirits of rejection, spirits of fear, spirits of sickness, spirits of infirmity, disease, anger, hatred, confusion, failure, and poverty to come out of my life now in the name of Jesus. Right now I can sense somebody, you're starting to cough and you're starting to even throw up or whatever. Don't let that stop you. Just go ahead and do what you have to do. Get those things out of you. In Jesus' name, if you feel like you're being choked, I command, I come, I come against that choking thing in the name of Jesus. Let them go and come out of them in Jesus' name. You won't choke them, you won't torment them, and you won't rip and tear them in the name of Jesus. Now pray this, I break the legal right of all generational spirits. That's right, I break the legal rights of all generational spirits operating behind a curse in the name of Jesus. You have no legal right to operate in my name. Now pray this with me, I bind and rebuke all familiar spirits and spirit guides that would try to operate in my life in the name of Jesus from my ancestors or anywhere else they may have gotten in in Jesus name you gotta go now pray this with me I renounce all false beliefs and philosophies inherited by my ancestors in the name of Jesus. Now pray this with me. I break all curses on my finances from any ancestors that have cheated or mishandled money in the name of Jesus. Now pray this with me. I break all curses of sickness and disease and command all inherited sickness to leave my body now in Jesus name. Be healed by the power of God right now in Jesus' name. Through Jesus, say this, through Jesus, my family is blessed. Say it again. Through Jesus, my family is blessed. Say this, I renounce all pride inherited from my ancestors. All pride inherited from my ancestors in Jesus' name. Now pray this, I break all oaths, vows, 
and pacts made with the devil by my ancestors in the name of Jesus or by myself in Jesus name and I command every demonic spirit associated with that to leave them now in the name of Jesus I pray this I break all oaths vows and pacts I break all curses by agents of Satan spoken against me my life in secret or excuse me let me give it to you this way pray this with me I break all curses by agents of Satan spoken against me and my life in secret or against me openly in the name of Jesus all curses by agents of Satan father I take authority over every curse and I break the power of it now the blood of Jesus is against you devil in Jesus name now pray this I break all written curses that would affect my life in the name of Jesus second Chronicles 34 24 I give you scriptures for all these these are all scriptures scriptures I read down everything that I do here has scriptures I break all written curses that affect my life in Jesus name say that all written curses I break every time release curse that would activate in my life as I grow older in the name of Jesus all time release curses are broken now in Jesus name over those people pray this I break every curse Balaam hired against my life in the name of the Lord Jesus Nehemiah 13 2 Lord turn every curse spoken against my life into a blessing Nehemiah 13 2 say this pray this I break all generation rebellion that would cause me to resist the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 7 verse 51 pray this I break all curses of death spoken by people in authority in my nation over my nation in the name of Jesus speak this please I break curses of death spoken against America by people from other nations in the name of Jesus amen hallelujah now I want to pray to break unholy covenants I want you to pray that along with me please I break and disallow all ungodly covenants oaths and pledges and I have made with my lips in the name of Jesus pray this with me I renounce and break all ungodly oaths made by my ancestors to idols demons false religions or ungodly organizations of any type in the name of Jesus pray this I break and dismantle, dismantle and, 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 and bind and command to leave all covenants with death and hell made by my ancestors in the name of Jesus and every demon that's associated with that has to go now in Jesus name I break and disannul all ungodly covenants made with idols or with demons by our ancestors in the name of the Lord Jesus all these have scriptures I could give you that one was Exodus 23 32 I break and disannul all blood covenants made through sacrifice that would affect my life in the name of Jesus I command all demons that claim any legal right to my life through covenants to come out in Jesus name come out of them in Jesus name I command you to come out in Jesus name thank you Lord always thank the Lord after you receive a deliverance put your hand up just begin to thank you thank you Lord thank you Lord Jesus thank you thank you master thank you master pray this with me I break and disannul all covenants made with false gods and demons through the occult involvement and witchcraft in the name of Jesus I went a little fast on that let me do it again I break and disannul any covenant made with false gods and demons through the occult involvement and witchcraft in Jesus name 
Now that's either you or your family members. Doesn't make any difference. Let me get a little closer here. Doesn't make any difference. Might have been your family members, but it can still affect you. I, I sense a lot of people are being delivered from a lot of things right now. Just let me stop for a second. Father, in Jesus' name, I break the power of every one of these demonic forces that are trying to be stubborn. I take authority over you. You've got to go in Jesus' name. You've got to go. You come out of them in Jesus' name. There it is. Now, pray this with me. I break and disannul all spirit marriages that would cause incubus and succubus demons, those are sexual spirits, incubus and succubus demons, to attack my life in the name of Jesus. Lord, I break the power of, 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 of the sexual lust, and the pornography. Come out of them in Jesus' name. I, I break the power of these incubus and succubus spirits, lust, masturbation in Jesus name pornography child porn and all that I break the power of that in the name of Jesus I command every demon associated with it to come out of these people I break pray this with me I break and disannul any marriage to any demon that would affect my life in the name of Jesus somebody says marriage to demon what are you talking about a lot of people in the occult world do this Come out in Jesus' name. I break all agreements with hell in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 28, 18. All agreements with hell. All compacts with hell in any way, shape, or form. If you've made them, we renounce them. And we now annul them. We break them. They no longer have power over you. Do you understand me? In Jesus' name. Now pray this. I have a covenant with God through the blood of Jesus. Christ. I am joined to the Lord, and I am one spirit with him. I break all ungodly covenants and renew my covenant to God through the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Pray this. I divorce myself from any demon that would claim my life through an ancestral covenant in the name of Jesus. I bind and cast out any family demon that would follow my life through ancestral covenants in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let's let's root out some let's root out some evil spirits here. I want to uh, pray for you here. Another prayer. I know that many of you right now are being delivered. You can share this with somebody, please do. That's what this is for. Now I want to pray, I want you to pray this. Pray, pray this with me. Let every plant that my Father has not planted be rooted out in the name of Jesus. I lay the axe to the root of every evil tree in my life. Let every ungodly generational taproot be cut and pulled out of my bloodline in Jesus' name. Let the roots of wickedness be as rottenness unto me and cast into the sea in Jesus name Luke 17 6 let your holy fire burn up every ungodly root in the name of Jesus let the confidence of the enemy be rooted out job 18 14 let every root of bitterness be cut out of my life Hebrews 12 15 let the prophetic word be released to root out evil kingdoms, Jeremiah 1.10. Let every evil person planted in my church and around me and in my life be rooted out in the name of Jesus. Let any sickness rooted in my body to be plucked up right now in Jesus' name. Let all false ministries that have rooted themselves in my city be plucked up in Jesus' name. Let every bramble and nettle be plucked up from, the li from my life in Jesus' name. Let all thorns be burnt out of my life in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let all spirits rooted in rejection come out of me in Jesus' name. Let all spirits rooted in pride come out of me in Jesus' name. Let all spirits rooted in rebellion come out of me in Jesus' name. 
Let all spirits rooted in fear come out of me in Jesus' name. Let all spirits rooted in lust and sexual sin come out of me in Jesus' name. Let all spirits rooted in curses come out of me in Jesus' name. Let all spirits rooted in witchcraft come out of me in Jesus' name. Let all spirits rooted in any part of my body and organs come out of me in the name of the Lord Jesus. We speak to the mountains now. Say, I speak to every mountain in my life and I command it to be removed and cast into the sea. Mark eleven twenty three. I speak to, speak to every financial mountain to be removed in my life in the name of Jesus. Let every evil mountain hear the voice of the Lord and be removed. Micah 6, 2. I prophesy to the mountains and command them to hear the word of the Lord and be removed. Ezekiel 36, 4. Let the mountains tremble at the presence of God. Habakkuk 3.10 I contend with every mountain and command them to hear my voice. Micah 6.1 Lay the mountain of Esau, the flesh, to waste. Malachi 1.3 Put forth your hand, O Lord, and overturn the mountain by the roots. Job 28.9 I speak to every mountain of debt to be removed and cast in the sea in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are against every destroying mountain. Jeremiah 51, 25. Let the mountains melt at your presence, O God. Judges 5, 10. Make waste the evil mountains in my life, O Lord. Isaiah 42, 15. I thresh every mountain. I beat them small, and I make the hills as chaff. Isaiah 45, 41, 15. Every mountain in my way will become as a plain. Zechariah 4, Seven. Now let's release something to you. Let the counsel of the wicked be spoiled in Jesus' name. Job 12, 17. Let the princes of darkness away be spoiled. Job 12, 19. Let the stout-hearted evil spirits be spoiled against me. Psalm 78, 76, 5. I bind the enemy, strip him of his armor, and divide his spoil. Luke eleven twenty two. I release the spoils to come upon Babylon and destroy her. Jeremiah fifty one fifty three. I release the spoils to come upon the high places in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jeremiah twelve twelve. Lord, you have spoiled principalities and powers. Colossians two fifteen. I spoil the enemy and take back his goods in the name of the Lord Jesus. Exodus twelve thirty six. I spoil the tents of the enemy in the name of Jesus, 1 Samuel 17, 53. I spoil those that are attempted to spoil me, Ezekiel 39, 10. The enemy will not spoil me, but he will be spoiled, Isaiah 33, 1. Let the places and the headquarters of darkness be spoiled in the name of the Lord Jesus, Amos 3, 11. Let the proud spirits be spoiled in the name of Jesus, Zechariah 11, 13, or excuse me, 11, 3. I release the canker worm to spoil the works of darkness in the name of Jesus. Nahum 3.16 Let the fortress of darkness be spoiled in the name of Jesus. Hosea 10.14 And one more. Let's go over here to uh, where we're going to break some curses. Hallelujah. I'm going to break curses and release the blessings of God over you. Say this with me. I am redeemed from the curse through the blood of Jesus. Galatians 3.13 I am the seed of Abraham and his blessing is mine. Galatians 3.14 I choose blessing instead of cursing and life instead of death. Deuteronomy 11.26 I break and release myself from all generational curses and iniquities as a result of the sins of my ancestors in Jesus' name. I break and release myself from all curses on both sides of my family back 60 generations right now in Jesus' name. I break all curses of witchcraft, sorcery, and divination in the name of Jesus. I break and release myself from, curse, from all curses of pride and rebellion in Jesus' name. I break and release myself from all curses of death and destruction in Jesus' name. I break and, and rebuke all curses of sickness and infirmity in the name of Jesus. I break and release myself from the curses of poverty, lack, and debt in the name of Jesus. I break and release myself from all curses of rejection in Jesus' name. 
I break and release myself from all curses of double-mindedness and schizophrenia in Jesus' name. Command schizophrenia to come out of them in Jesus' name. Right now, you obey me. I break and release myself from all curses of Jezebel and Ahab in the name of Jesus. I break and release these people and from all the curses of, of divorce and separation in Jesus' name. I break and release myself and these people from all curses of perversion in the name of Jesus. I break and release these people from all curses of confusion, mental illness in the name of Jesus. I break and release, these, release myself from all curses of idolatry in Jesus' name. I break and release myself from all curses causing accidents and premature death in the name of Jesus. I break and release myself from all curses of wandering and vagabond spirits in the name of Jesus. I break and release myself from all spoken curses and negative words against me and others by those in authority and I bless them. I bless them in Jesus name. I break and release myself from all self-inflicted curses by negative words I've spoken in Jesus name. I command every demon hiding and operating behind a curse to come out now in Jesus name. I break every one of those demons power hiding behind those curses and I command you to go from them now in Jesus name come out of them now in Jesus name you cannot resist the blood of Jesus you cannot resist the name of Jesus these people are free in whom the sun sets free they are free indeed I bind you I command you to leave them in Jesus name I break your power I command you to come out of them I loose them I loose them in Jesus name thank you Lord This should be enough for right now, but I'm going to pray for you here, another prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, any other satanic influence that I did not mention, because there's so many of them, we deal with that now. Doesn't matter what the name is, what the spirit is, what the torment is, we command you to come out of them now and leave them in Jesus' name. Now, whenever I pray for people like this, what happens is normally the deliverance begins to take place. Sometimes it can go on for days and at times even weeks. But I want you to start raising your hands right now and thanking God for delivering you from all of the evil that we have prayed for. And that's basically everything. Begin to thank the Lord. Just lift up your hands and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 And I want to say to you, if I pray for you and you've been delivered today, maybe you need some more help in some way, uh, you can go to our Facebook page, to our website. You can email me on my website, faithalivefellowship.org. In fact, on faithalivefellowship.org, we have lots of free seminars. And, of course, on our Facebook page, we have a lot of these seminars and, and a lot of these things. And I pray that you won't be selfish with this. Go ahead and share it with somebody. Share it with your friends. People need to pray these prayers, even if they don't think they do, because sometimes there can be something there that we didn't even know. These strongholds need to be broken. And the name of Jesus certainly will do that. But I also want to pray for a healing of your body because many times when evil spirits leave, healing takes place. But if there's not an evil spirit and you need healing, the Bible says by his stripes, by his wounds, and by his bruises we were healed. So I want you right now in Jesus' name to be healed. Father, I pray and take authority over every sickness and every disease. Migraine headaches is leaving somebody. That was caused by an evil spirit. You're being delivered from that right now in Jesus' name. Father, I rebuke cancer. I rebuke breast cancer. I rebuke cancers of the blood. I rebuke brain cancer. I rebuke skin cancer. I rebuke bone cancer. Cancers of the nervous system, the bones, and affect everything, Lord, like that. 
and on all cancers in any organ, all cancerous cells, I curse you. I command you to wither and die and drop off, and I command these cancer patients to be healed. I command paralysis to leave you right now. I command stroke victims to be healed in the name of Jesus. Start moving something you couldn't move. Get up and walk off in Jesus' name. Begin to praise God. I pray for people who have arthritis of any sh any form, rheumatoid arthritis or whatever. I take authority over that. I ask that the power of God right now is go through every cell of our bodies, energizing and healing and delivering us and setting us free. Thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. I see somebody's heart. You have a wrong heartbeat, some kind of a fluttering in your heart, a, a bouncing around up and down your heart and everything. In Jesus' name, I pray for that electrical system in your heart to be healed. Now, thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. Hearing problems, I command, put your put your your fingers in your ears. Father, in Jesus' name, I command those those deaf spirits to come out of them in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Now test your hearing because you'll notice that your hearing will begin to work. I pray for blind eyes to be healed. I command that blind spirit to come out of them in Jesus' name. Open your eyes and look. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for healing blind eyes. Somebody's being healed in your sinuses and a problem up here with your nose, I don't know if it's cartilage, maybe a damage from drugs or something in your nose, you're being healed. Thyroid problems, I command them to be healed. Lord's giving me thyroid problems. Be healed right now in the thyroid. Kidney problems. Be healed in Jesus' name. Uh, somebody has a problem in your right foot, and your in your uh, tendon back there has been damaged, some kind of accident or something. Uh, I don't know exactly, but it's being healed right now. Just move it around. You'll, you'll find that the fire of God's going through you, and you're being healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody's elbows are being healed, or elbow. In fact, you've got a swollen, swollenness in your elbow, and it's just going to go down in Jesus' name, and all the pain's leaving in Jesus' name. You fell down and hit your elbow, and that's bad. I hematote, hematote, it's bad, it's swollen up in Jesus' name. I pray for the power of God to go down your spine, straighten out every nerve, every tendon, every vertebrae back in place, all the way down through your back in Jesus' name. Ulcers, I speak to ulcers, stomach ulcers. I command you to be healed in the name of Jesus. Pain and stomach problems, you be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I pray for them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Anything I did not mention, Lord, that's all been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I come against every sickness and every disease not mentioned here. And I thank you, Lord, for healing to take place in their bodies, in Jesus' name. Now, one more thing I'm going to counsel you. If you've been delivered today, it's very important that if you are not filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that you get filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And by that I mean... The baptism of the Holy Ghost means God baptizes you with the Holy Spirit and power. But he also, the Holy Spirit is God. He and when he does that, he baptizes you in his love. And he completely and totally will fill you up to overflowing on all those areas that need to be filled up now. So, um, I pray for millions of people across America, uh, literally now on television, but I've seen live and in person almost 10,000 people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the ability in my meetings. And the Bible says that in the book of Acts chapter 2 that Jesus told his disciples, he said in Acts chapter 1, you wait for the promise of the Father which is coming in my name because he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire and you're going to receive that power. He said, he commanded them, he said, you do not leave the upper room until you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Paul, when he went into on missionary journeys into a new town, he'd find disciples. The first thing he would ask them is, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? We all need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 2 through 4, talk about when we pray in the Spirit, we're praying to God. We're talking to God supernaturally in the spirit, in other tongues. 
The Bible says when we do this, we improve ourselves. It's one of the greatest gifts that we can get. And you need it so that you can stay filled with the Holy Spirit and you can stay um, built up in God and that you can be growing in the things of God. Now, you also need to read your Bible and go to church. But I want to pray for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Don't be afraid. Let me tell you something about God. He will never hurt any one of his kids who do nothing to harm us. You don't have to be afraid of getting another evil spirit. Those are all gone now. This is the Holy Spirit we're talking about. The Holy Spirit of God. And it only comes through children of God in the name of Jesus. So if you are a child of God, the way you receive it is very simple. I'm going to pray for you, and I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, I want you to begin to open your mouth, but begin to speak. Now you have to do the speaking. God won't do it for you. You have to cooperate with him. You have to utter something. Because I thought, when I first heard about this, that somehow God was going to make me do something. But God doesn't do that. The devil's the one who makes people do things. God is a gentleman. We must yield to him. We must cooperate with him. As an example, I'm talking to you in English because I want to. Nobody's forcing me. There's not somebody back here making me talk in English. I'm going to talk in tongues now. Beautiful. But every time that I do that, I do it by faith. I do it because I want to. I can sing that way. Beautiful. And I can pray to God that way all day long if I want to. And he'll pray about anything in my life that needs to be changed. Or other people's lives. It's one of the most powerful things in the world. But when you receive it, you have to open your mouth and you have to start speaking. Not in English, not in Spanish, not in any other language you know, but you just trust God. At first I thought it was gibberish. Clearly it's not gibberish. It's a language. As I began to pray more and more, the language became clearer and clearer. And so will yours, but you have to make that first step. So I'm going to pray for you to make that first step. And if you'll cooperate with the Holy Spirit, open your mouth and start speaking but not in English, just start speaking whatever comes out, just trust God. When you do that, you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then continue to pray that way, and don't let the devil talk you out of it, because he'll try to. He always does. He's done it to everybody I know who received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But don't ever listen to him. Every time you hear that, you just pray more. Pray more that way, okay? So I want you to pray this with me, all of you together, who want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Pray this way. Say, Heavenly Father, you pray that. Say, Heavenly Father, I'm your child. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've forgiven all people that have wronged me. I've forgiven myself. And I know I need this baptism in the Holy Ghost. And so I believe that I received that great gift from you. And thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for filling me to overflowing right now. And when that wild preacher counts to three, as an act of faith, I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to begin to speak in a brand new tongue. And I promise you, Lord, I will pray that way every day for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, Three, sungala masak. Let it go. Begin to voice it to God. Hele masunguru kushiki. Come on, start praying. You have to voice it to God. You can't just sit there like a bump on a log. And no cheating, no speaking in any. Don't be thanking God in English right now. It's not a time for that. Don't be speaking in Spanish if you know that, or French if you know that. Just oh, let me. Whatever comes out in a brand new tongue. Come on, pray with me. Yours won't be like mine. It'll be different. Beautiful. Go, go, go. Faster, faster. 
Very beautiful. Hola makundara. Can I pray like that? Everybody pray together. Akishi asondo kokushi arabako lamusim brakishi ka taparusukiri amatoku sibrakasai. Oh, I know you want to keep praying that way, but you know, right now I want you to stop just for a second. You keep praying that way. Keep doing it every day. Your life will change. And those evil spirits and evil thoughts and evil things that used to plague you now are gone. And as the Holy Spirit fills you up to overflowing in your life, you'll be closer to Jesus Christ than ever before. Man, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, it changed my life forever. All, all the habits that I used to have that I couldn't get over with seemed to just drop off of me as I spent time in the presence of God. Wow. Let us know if God's done something special for you. Will you please drop me a note or an email or something? I want to thank you for joining me today. This is Pastor Tom again. Thank you for joining me. We'll do other sessions like this, but I felt like God wanted me to do this. And I, I just feel a real anointing on this. Till next time, God bless you.